Welcome to the Down Dog Athletics Podcast, a competitor's guide to mental health and mastery, your resource for conversations around mental health and the mindsets necessary to master every area of your life. My name is Paul Klingen, and I'm a former Division I athlete that struggled with my mental health until I started yoga, which opened me up to other practices that gave me a balanced approach to my physical and mental health. The goal of this podcast is to inspire others to do the same, train and compete like an athlete, while also having the ability to slow down and practice stillness. When you can do both, you find balance and evolve into a greater version of yourself. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show again. Took last week off, and I'm excited to be back podcasting again. I'm excited about today's guest. The feedback on the last podcast with Sam Tooley was phenomenal. And if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to the podcast with Coach Sam Tooley. I believe it's episode 43, 44, whatever the one before this is. And it is the most listened to podcast that I've had. So, Definitely, if you haven't checked that one out, check it out after you listen to this one because it's so good, just as this one is so good. A few housekeeping things before I get started. If you're listening to this on Tuesday when it comes out, uh, this Friday I'm going to be releasing the version 2.0 of my 28-day plan. First version had one workout, had some yoga videos that you could follow, and then a bunch of educational material, about 19 pages of uh, different things around training, different things around nutrition, different things about mental health, journaling. This one, I took the ante up. There are now three different training splits. So if you want to train three times and do yoga three times over the course of the week, there's a version for that. There's a version for four and two, four training, two yoga. There's a version for five and two if you really want to be getting after it every single day. One big thing with that, though, make sure that one of those yoga days is really a recovery day. You want to be super parasympathetic with that. What I mean by that is make it relaxing. It should be something that stresses you out so it's kind of an active recovery off day. But the other thing that's really cool about this program that I'm, I've built out is it has customizable drop down. So rather than saying, okay, you have to do a bench press, I want you to do a horizontal press. And I have got some content on my website if you want to check out and figure out what a horizontal press is. But really, there's movement patterns that you want to make sure that you're training. And maybe you don't have the bench press available. Well, you can go to the drop down and select a floor press. You can select a banded push up. You can select something that mimics that movement that you'll still want to progress week to week. But that's something that I've added to this, and it's really cool. The other thing that I'm going to add that is actually already added is full-length yoga videos, 30, 40 minutes with audio included where I'm demonstrating, giving you cues. And so it's something that you can actually follow along in your living room, something you can follow along on your phone. Been getting really good feedback on that. So anyway, packaged it all into one thing. So it is three different versions that you can follow based off of how you want to train. And then it's customizable based off of the equipment that you have in your gym and the equipment that maybe you feel comfortable using. So really excited for that to come out. 28 day plan 2.0. One last thing, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter that is available on the website, you'll also be a part of that if you grab the 28 day plan, but that's where I put everything from podcasts, videos, blogs, uh, discounts on merchandise, All goes in the newsletter, all wraps everything up that comes out weekly, so be sure to subscribe to that. And now that that is all out of the way, I'm excited to get to today's guest. And before I do, I want to bring up a point that has been really showing up a lot of times in my life the last few weeks. A lot of people have been coming to me, hey, I want to start a podcast, but it's so saturated. There's so many people with podcasts. And you're right, there is a lot of people with podcasts, and you need to produce a good podcast worth listening to in order for people to listen to it. But I think... There's a few things that people miss when it comes to doing something that you want to do, but thinking that there's no space for your voice. One, you have a unique story, and that unique story is going to connect with people. And one of the reasons why I really love this podcast with Officer Frank is his story is really unique and really powerful, just like Sam's in the previous podcast, and people are going to resonate with that story. And we both have the same perspective of, one person reaching out and saying, hey, your podcast helped change the trajectory of my life or I reached out and got help because of you guys being able to open up. That's the ROI that we're looking for in this podcast and these conversations. It's not trying to get $10,000 an episode. It's not trying to get 10,000 listeners. That may happen and that'll be a bonus. But we're out here trying to change how people think and talk about mental health while also still going through the lens. You'll, you'll hear about his story, but the guy is really strong and competes in strongman events. And we both come from this athletic competitive background, but we also understand and really want to promote the value of, of mental health and making it something that people are more aware of. Uh, the other thing with podcasts as well is like this guy is all the way over in New York. 
normally I would not be able to just sit down and have an hour and a half conversation with someone across the country, but podcasting creates a platform for that. So whether you want to start a podcast or you're wanting to do something that you think your voice doesn't matter, there are so many positives that you're not thinking of. And, you know, everything is going to be saturated in some aspect. No one's inventing something that no one's ever heard of or done before. And that's where you just got to take the mindset of like, all right, I'm going to be good at it. I'm going to be great at it. Then I'm going to be the best at it. And when you're the best at something, it doesn't matter how saturated it is, you're going to shine and you're going to be able to get your message through. But anyway, side tangent, rant over. I'm really excited to introduce to you guys Officer Frank. You guys are going to love this podcast. We talk about his foundation, Reps for Responders, and everything he's doing to create a community for people to go and work out, but also be able to open up about things that they deal with on the job or things that they're dealing with at home. And I don't want to steal his thunder, so I'll get right to it. Here we go, Officer Frank. You guys are going to enjoy this one. Officer Frank, what's up, man? Thanks for coming on the show. What's up, Paul? How you doing, man? Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor, and I love your platform to really share my experience. So thanks thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. I had a buddy. He's actually from Boston. He's in L.A. now, but he shared your podcast with Mark Bell with me. I was like, wow, this is a really cool story. It's a really cool combination of two things that I think really needs to be shared with mental health first responders, but then also looking at it through the lens of strength training. And I, I was watching your video this morning, got me hyped watching you, you know, bed, like uh, deadlift and doing all the strongman stuff, but then still having like the, the vulnerability on the other side to you to be like, there's this other stuff that, you know, you also got to deal with beyond just the X's and O's of reps and sets. So that's super cool. So kudos to you uh, for creating what you've created. Right, right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Rob, Rob, I've known Rob for years now. He's a good guy. I've known him for seven years. And that's, you're talking about Rob that moved to LA, right? Yep. Rob Atkin. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's a good guy and I'm thankful for him to able to hook us up. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So fill the listeners in, fill me in. I'm sure there's things that I, I've missed, but what, how did reps for responders start? And, you know, what does it all entail? Right. Um, so before I start a podcast, you know, I, I, I say, you know, the NYPD, they didn't send me here. They didn't, you know, this is just for me. This is not really for me. This is for to share my story and my mission so it can help other people, right? Everyday people. This is no, nothing affiliated with my job. This is just all about trying to spread the word on mental health and working out and kind of being the strongest physically and mentally you could be every single day. Um, so that I just want to get that, that message across, you know, um, so Reps for Responders, um, it is, long story short, it's, it's going to be like, it is the first first responder gym in where I live, Rockin County, Westchester, the lower Hudson River area. I'm about 45 minutes away from Manhattan and Bronx with no traffic, you know, on a good day. Um, and, you know, I went through my own, you know, I was struggling 2018 very hard, uh, 2019, and I just started lifting again you know, consistently back in September of 2019. So um, after my struggles and seeing my father's struggle uh, of talking about addiction and mental health, um, I always wanted to open up a gym, right? But what was really like when I retire? So what was stopping me from opening up the gym right now? You know, like in, in 2020, you know, and it's like a lot of people look at things and it's like, all right, well, what's going to stop me? The positives and negatives. But like in reality, like the only thing that's going to stop you is really yourself, you know? So everyday battle is really, it is, so you hear it's so, it's so cliche, you versus you. Well, the only person that can hold you back is yourself. So, you know, as I was at work thinking and just driving and everything, I would take notes, everything I see. And I said, you know, reps for responders. All right. The first, um, it's a nonprofit and any first responder, volunteer or not, retired or not, any military, of course, veteran or not, active, can use the gym for free, no charge, open gym. And I was like, all right, I like the idea, but, you know, how am I going to really put it, get it from paper, right, into uh, reality? So um, there's a lot of volunteers where I live, from firemen, and EMS, and EMT. So, you know, not everyone has a gym in their precinct or in their firehouse, you know what I mean? And there's volunteers. This is not their everyday job. So I started talking to a lot of people and then I had to, you know, go through the nonprofit work. Um, it's 501c3 approved. Um, so like I said, it's, it's still in the womb. It's very close. I'm just waiting for the insurance to open up and uh, to get the insurance okay to open up. And right now we'll have a small space, but the goal is to raise as much money as we can now to uh, get a bigger space and really make it 
I'm not looking at it for people to make games physically, which I am, of course, but I'm looking at those, those mental games, right? It's like, I want to look at it like a church, you know, like an area to come and a safe haven, right? You're going through a hard time. You don't want to go home. You have a place to go to, to feel that comfort, to not feel alone. Cause that's the, you know, a lot of humans in the mind and the psyche feeling alone. No one wants to feel alone. You know what I mean? So that's really my, my mission and my goal here. Um, I'm a big statistic guy. And what happened with me, I started reading about my disease, started reading into it, right? I've watched thousands of videos in the past few years, not even before my depression and addiction, just about working out. And I've tried to, you know, I, I'll self-teach myself these things, but then I'll, I like to attract myself to older people, right? I'm 27. So the guys that are in their 30s, 40s, they've already lived my part of my life, right? I'm not going to go to my friends and ask them for advice. I can, but they just probably, they know just as much as me. You know what I mean? So it's getting that wisdom from those older people. And um, I, I'm very blessed uh, for this opportunity. So um, we're going to have open gym free for first responders and military. Uh, um, if you're a civilian and not first responder, you know, you're going to be able to use the gym as well. Um, but that's obviously going to be charged. And then we're going to have uh, the guy who I'm running it with is a retired second grade detective out of Manhattan robbery and the, the taxi unit that they used to have. And they, uh, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, 35 years. He did 25 years in the street. You know, um, he's, a, he's a street cop. He's been all over the city, and that jiu-jitsu is going to be big, right? Tactics save lives. And um, I'll be doing, like, strength and conditioning classes, more of a strongman type base, because I believe that that's really, like, the meat and potatoes for um, – that correlates so well to the real life of a first responder, right? You're not just powerlifting or – you're picking things like you're, you're, you're not just picking up a deadlift bar and dropping it, right? You're, you have to push the sled. You have to pick up a sandbag. You have to pick up a stone, but that mental, you know, that mental uh, aspect correlates so well in the real life. If you get down on the ground or if you get hurt, you'll just instantly get right back up. You don't have to think about it, right? When something crazy goes on in the street or in real life, you just want to react right to the best you can positively. So we'll do that. Um, personal training, of course, but I really think there's going to be key and like, as you see, I'm trying to build like more of a, a family type gym, family type guys that are going to the gym. Hey, let's go to the diner before the gym. Let's get a coffee after the gym, before the gym. You know what I mean? Let's trade numbers. So maybe there's things that I, I, I can't tell the guys at my precinct or at my firehouse or my wife, but I can trust you, Paul. You know what I mean? It's like, let's try to build that trust up. And um, we're going to have open first responder meetings. So what's going to happen is it's, not, it's like an Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. You come in. My goal is to have three meetings a week. A topic meeting, it could be on fear, it could be on resentment, it could be on hate, it could be on guilt, and have other guys, you know, I'll, I'll open up the meeting, say how I feel about, let's say, fear, and then other guys will talk about their uh, reaction to fear. And then the other topic will be, um, uh, not a topic, that's one meeting, topic meeting, and then we'll have a, a speaker meeting. I know a lot of first responders in sobriety, you know, come in and talk about why do they get sober, why are they, you know, why are they sober, and what and why do they work out? Now, not only people that are first responders as well, a lot of popular fitness people in, in, in the industry are sober as well, right? Because you can't make these gains and, and do very well by drinking on the weekends and blacking out. So why are they picking up a barbell? Why are they putting 500, 600 pounds on their back, you know, and explain the mental aspect, not really just to get big quads and big hamstrings and look like a Greek God, right? You, right? you could look like a Greek God, but if, if you think, if you don't think like one and you don't think you know, smart, what, what's really, what, you know, to me, that's me personally, what, what's it matter? Um, and then there's a book that I always preach. It's called the, Emo the emotional, the emotional survival for law enforcement, a guide for officers and their families. It's by um, Kevin M. Gil Martin. He has a PhD and it's about 200. Let me just get the exact, not even 200. Wow. 142 pages. And I read this book in the two and a half, three hours straight because it was so interesting to me and it hit me right in the face it like punched me in the mouth like wow frank this is you and this is has saved me and they talk about the magic chair right you come home and you sit down on the couch or 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 your chair or your bed and you're zoned out you're zoned out from everything you're not even thinking about right now right right like if i was in the magic chair right now paul whatever you said to me i wouldn't think about it because i'm so focused on what happened at work what's going to happen tomorrow i'm not focused in the now the reality and first responder or not a lot of people have have that problem you know what i mean so that's that's going to be a big key component um, to this uh, to a foundation to this gym and uh, fundraisers, of course. And I'm very lucky we raised about twelve thousand dollars in three weeks, um, and not even sixty people barely sixty people donated. So not a lot of people know about this, you know. But the support is is huge. 
you know, you're getting over two, you know, the, what was the, the value? It comes out to $200, $200 per donation is the average. So, like, it's just great to see the support. And this is only from my Instagram, right? Not even from anything else yet. So that's really basic um, what reps and responders entails. And, and it's going to go from there. Dude, I love that. I love the bit, one. The thing that sounds like you're really focusing on is the community and having an opportunity for guys to come. Maybe not even guys, but it's first responders. I'm guessing it's females too, but come and, and be right, vocal. right, right. Guys and, and girls. And sorry, and, there's, there's one thing. Yeah, right. That we're going to have first responder female meetings only because there's guy, there's guys I want to talk about guy things and girls. I want to talk about girl things and they might not feel comfortable sharing that. So that's also going to be a big aspect of females, first responders only um, to come in and, 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 and talk about their issues. So sorry for cutting you off, but I didn't want to forget about the females as well. You know? Yeah, no, well, I know, I know you, you were doing both, but it's, it's so cool to create that space for people to be able to feel vulnerable and have those conversations because maybe they go home and, their spouse can't relate to them or they've got kids and they want to be able to go and be present with their kids. But until they let go of something, it's going to affect them. And I have never heard of that, that saying that the chair or the, you know, the couch where you go and sit, I just pictured in the movies, everyone's always got like their chair, they go sit on, they just space out. Uh, but I, I mean, the idea too, of it being really functional and you, I was watching your video and strong man for me, for what you do as a first responder for me feels more functional than just what people call like functional training because you literally do sometimes have to pick up 250 pound human, drag them to safety and you might have something else on top of you as well. And so it's not just good enough to be able to do lunges. You got to grab really random objects and move them. And so when I was seeing that, I was like, wow, that makes a ton of sense. But then I also love the element that you talk about too, is like you got to mentally be strong. You can look like a Greek God, but if, you're a mental, you know, civilian or whatever the opposite of a Greek God is, you know, it, it's all for naught. And so just want to reiterate, man, I love, love the foundation that you're creating. I love the community that you're creating. And I think it's also really cool too, that you've been able to do this off the back of your story and be able to open up about alcohol, open up about depression. I would be curious for you, just you mentioned being 27 when you have so much more wisdom to gain, but over the last few years, what have you learned about depression that maybe the 22, 23 year old version of yourself was like, Whoa, I looked at this the completely different way. Right. It's funny you say that <clears throat> because when I was 22 or 23 <clears throat> and you're young, right? You think you have the world by the balls. You think you know everything. Right. And especially at that age, you graduated college. I'm lucky that I, I got on the police force at 23. So I'm still a kid, you know, 27 is still a kid. And I love the quote by the rock, you know, in his twenties, he didn't know anything in his thirties. He's finally to get to know himself in his forties. He finally feels comfortable. So if people are love the rock, right. He's a great person to look up to. If they just take back and think about that, like, wow, it took the rock over 40 years to feel comfortable in his own skin. Right. So it's like people in around our age and our twenties, like, we don't know what's going on. We don't know who we are. We're learning, you know, and it took me 27 years to feel to, to kill my ego to destroy it and feel comfortable in my skin and um to really you know and i'm learning every day right paul i i, I i'm just taking my life experiences and i'm learning from them and that's a, that's the problem a lot of people don't have something dramatic or drastic can happen and they're not taking wow they're not taking this as a learning experience you know so i'm still learning every single day i have so much more to learn but i can feel a little more comfortable as each day goes on who is frank right and, and not focusing on who is Paul or who is someone else, right? Because that's only going to slow me down and slow my growth down, maybe even backtrack me. But it's really about who you are as an individual. And in your 20s, you don't really know much. It's just not a lot of life experience. Like I said before, right? I went to the older people. I was just lucky with that feeling to get that life experience. How'd you get here, you know, and, and go from there? Yeah. How hard has was it initially to recognize this is the ego and I need to let it go. You, you, there's a lot of books that are coming out now, like ego is the enemy. Um, and coming from my yoga background, it's always like, you know, you gotta let the ego go. I think there's times when it does serve you because it keeps you like pushing forward or you want to be presented in a respectful manner. You got to have some sort of self worth, but of course, it's of the course. ego that keeps you from talking to someone. It's the ego that keeps you from hearing other people's advice and that I'm too, I'm too good for that person. That's yeah. exactly. Um, to backtrack that though, real quick, that when you asked me how I thought a 22, 23 year old, I didn't think depression was real, man. I just always said to myself and I had friends that were depressed. 
How could someone be so sad, so upset, not work out, not eat clean for a week, two weeks, a month, years? I didn't think it was really po physically possible. You know, I didn't know until that was my learning experience. Like, wow, I lived it, you know? So every, you know, when people say they're depressed, you know, and then you can look at, now I can look at someone and even know this, that they're depressed without them even saying a word to me, you know? So it is very real. And it's a, uh, you know, I'm blessed that it happened to me because if it didn't happen to me, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, so definitely my younger self definitely was a big egotistic and not really not try. I always try to help people with my background, but more of like, uh, my way or the highway type of deal. Right. Um, really kind of that kind of thinking and, um, take advice with a grain of salt and then just try to figure it out on my own. Again, you can't do this world on, you can't do this on your own. The best trainers in the world, the best athletes in the world, they have trainers. They have everyone. They have a team. Donald, Donald Trump, you like him or not, he's sober. His brother died. He was an alcoholic. He never picked up a drink of his life in his life. He's a president of the United States. He has a team and he's a billionaire. What else? You know what I mean? So it's like, look at that side of a person of really how they present themselves. Right. You know what I mean? So the, the ego is just like, uh, and it, the crazy thing, Paul, is that it can come back at any time. Right. I could build this rep for responders. Hopefully it takes off. And what if I become an egotistic, you know, douchebag, you know, I don't know. I'd never want that to happen, but 10 years from now we could be having a different conversation, you know? So you always got to remember, what are you feeding? Like, you know, that, that quote where, are you feeding, you know, yourself or you're feeding the, the wolf of the ego? You know what I mean? So what you're doing every single day, you're feeding something, whether you realize it or not, you're feeding a part of your mind. And it depends on where it's going in the unconscious or conscious mind. It, it, it all depends on. And the crazy part about that poll is you control it both. That's the craziest part, man. You have no idea that you control both. So that's, that's uh, it, it's a very, it's powerful stuff, man. Very powerful stuff. That could be a whole podcast on itself, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I wish we had more time. The thing that I love about training, because I think it's something that everyone can get a hold of. Or it's like you work out, you lose weight, you get stronger, all these things. There's it's parallels, there's there's parallels to it in everything. So I like using the saying, like, you got to sweep the floor every day. If you don't work on your fitness, you're going to lose it. If you don't work on your mental health, you're going to lose it. If you don't work on these things about you as a person. So you mentioned your ego. It's like, you gotta, you gotta sweep the ego every day because it can come back same way as you know, an old injury can come back if you don't work on it every single day. And that's why I love exactly. fitness. That's why I love, you know, football or sports as an analogy for so many other things in life, relationships, right? You got to work on it every single day. Right. Like you, like that was perfect. You said that like, uh, uh, your podcast with Johnny, if I pronounce this last name, Johnny Hecker. Hecker. Yeah. Hecker. Do you think he really wanted to sit on the 30 yard line every day of practice and hit fucking 20, 30 field goals, 40 field goals? You know, I don't know his routine, but he's got to do it. Right. Because his ego might say, all right, well, I can skip these 10 kicks. And then you never know when it comes down to game time decision, you know, those 10 kicks, you know, he might, he might miss it, but now he's doing those 10 kicks. He's going to feel more confident and he's feeding himself powerful. So yeah, Derek Jeter, does he want to sit in the cage and hit freaking an hour, two hours a day? No, but you got to do it just like it's a skill, right? You can lose, like you said, you can lose that at any moment. So, if you can stay on top of those type of uh, what you want to do in your real life situations, you know, and it's, it's so cliche and so corny, but practice makes perfect and no one's ever perfect, but you can get to where you want to want to get to, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. The other thing you've mentioned too, is just about addiction with alcohol. And I, I know personally people who have struggled with it. I know I grew up thinking it was really cool to like binge and have all these, you know, like you black out and you're like, oh, I'm so cool. And it's like, Eh, that's not cool. And I'd love for that to be a conversation that society has in a way. But what was your experience like that as well? Because I think it is really powerful to hear, especially the guys be like, Hey, I was doing it this way and I had it wrong. Oh, <laughs> well, first I'm a grateful alcoholic, right? So I'm happy this happened to me. Um, yeah. If I would have known this stuff when I was 15 or 10 or, you know, I still want to be in this position. I had to go through help, man. I had to go through this crazy experience to be here. Um, yeah. But I had the same mindset, you know, drinking, man. Drinking has been around for centuries. It's been around for thousands of years. It's just so, back then, no one knew the effects on the brain. No one really knew. You get drunk, you do stupid. But no one really knew the causes of alcohol, especially for the human psyche, which is 
which is a downfall for a lot of people, man, that can cause depression, anxiety. And if you already have depression, anxiety, and you drink, you're just feeding that wolf, right? You're feeding that part of the ego. You're feeding it negative, just very negative. So I call it rat poison. Um, so it is very, very toxic. And um, there's so many people, um, famous people, who are sober and you wouldn't even know. And they're the best in their craft, right? Donald Trump. Tom Hardy, crazy actor. When he was in his 20s, he went to rehab. He didn't know who he was. He said he was a crackhead. Samuel L. Jackson said he was a crackhead. We, um, Eminem is in recovery. He has an whole album about recovery. Um, Bradley Cooper, Brad Pitt. I can go on and on. And I just named the best of their craft, right? That uh, Demi Lovato is a great singer. I just saw something that Bieber has been sober since 2014. He was a disaster yeah. up to 21 years old. So mm -hmm. it's like, I call it the human kryptonite, right, Paul? There's only a matter of time. It's going to get you, man. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your, your, your wife, your girlfriend, your career, relationships. Hell, you might even lose your life. And you're just so blindfolded. You're blinded by this alcoholism because it's really just taking over your mind. If anything alters your mind, it's a drug. So alcohol is a drug, and I believe it's the most powerful drug in the world because you can only die from alcohol withdrawals. You can't die from heroin withdrawals. Um, and that's a scientific fact. Um, and it's so easy to get, it's so act the access and it's so you, you can walk around the streets, not in New York city and, and drink. And it's not a big deal because it's socially acceptable. And, you know, obviously back in prohibition, they try to get rid of alcohol, but they couldn't because it's all about the money. Um, so it is very powerful and I wish people could see it as a drug, but some people might listen to this podcast and say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And I, I can say I know what I'm talking about because I lived it. You know, there's a lot of people that, and doctors and stuff, they study this and stuff, but did all your psychiatrists and all your psychologists live what you lived? You know what I mean? So if you see a psychologist or a psychiatrist, don't go, just don't go to one, right? If you go to look at colleges or you look at jobs, you don't just go to one. You, you apply to a lot to see what feels right for you and get that connection. You know what I mean? Don't always listen to what the psychologist has to say because he doesn't really know you. He's giving you advice to look at it a different way. So you personally know yourself. So that's my best advice on that. But alcoholism, alcohol is very cunning and, and powerful, baffling. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's strong. It's very strong. And yeah. like I said, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Well, and you make a really good point out about the money and how it literally is a fabric of our society. And it's so ingrained in having a good time. It's so ingrained in sports. It's so ingrained in, you know, a way to relieve stress. You come home, you crack a beer and, you know, I think for some people there is a way to do it in moderation, but to your point, it gets, it, it'll get you, it'll get everyone. And you know, it's, you don't want to ever be rigid, like prohibitions, like we're going to completely get rid of something because that just swings the pendulum one way. But it, there's, there's right. very few things that are positive about it. And to your point, if someone st already struggles with something mentally and then you're altering the brain, it's just going to accelerate whatever problem someone's having with that. And you don't know what your, br what the situation of your brain is on alcohol unless you unless you go there and so then that's where it becomes you know even more even more scary right so um the united states about 50 percent of us drink socially every weekend right now some people can get have two or three beers and put it down some people can't so out of that 50 percent that does drink on the weekends 10 percent of those people are alcoholics so it's not as high as people think it is, but it's still a high number, right? 10%. If we have a hundred people in a room, 10 people of those people are alcoholics. That if they pick up a drink, they're going to have eight to 10 to, to 20 drinks. But definition of an alcoholic is not how much you drink. It's not what you drink. It's what happens when you drink, right? So if you're losing relationships, if you're losing jobs, if you feel depressed, if you're getting suicidal thoughts, if you're waking up in the morning, having panic attacks saying, Oh, I hate myself, right? You're feeding that ego and you're feeding, not that ego, but you're feeding your brain negative thoughts it's not helping it's a it, then it becomes a pattern right 21 days to break a habit and then it becomes a pattern to even break out of like what do you talk about dude when we we're in our 20s uh, um you know junior in college senior in college a little after it's like you woke up hungover and you're ah like, oh, shit here we go again you know like and it takes about three days for your body to get rid of that alcohol mentally and physically think about all the food you eat when you're drunk then think about the food you eat when you're hungover you know so it's not just one day you're damaging you're doing it for days and those days are going to add up to years. And then those years are going to add up to your death. So when you do drink, 
constantly, you're, 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 you're just killing yourself. It's a slow suicide. And, you know, I don't want to see people kill themselves, you know, and that's another part of this gym. There's no reason for a slow suicide, you know. Don't get me wrong. If you want to go out, you have a great event, Christmas, your birthday, you know, you open up this gym. If people want to drink and have fun, go ahead. But if you're acting erratic and you're acting very irrational, you know, then it's just – it, it just, you don't have to live that way. And that's why I'm really trying to preach. You know, there, there's always another choice to, to cool down. Like you said, a stress release, right? Cause when you drink, what's happening, you're releasing serotonin in your brain. You're releasing those, you're releasing those endorphins, but you're also doing that with three, 10 minute walks a day after every meal. You're also doing that with a podcast and a conversation. You're doing that with a text messages to your mom, to your girlfriend. Hey, just want to know I love you and I appreciate you. You know, so there's so many different outlets. You know, work, we like working out. Maybe people like painting. Maybe people like playing video games. That's another addiction for another topic. But <laughs> anything in moderate, anything in moderation, right, Paul, is is not that bad for you, right? You can't deadlift every day. You'll freaking you're, you'll never get gains. Your body can't take it. So it's everything in moderation. But it's just recognizing that problem, right? The first, you know, the first step is admitting that you are powerless over alcohol. That is so powerful. It takes years for people to do that. Paul, sometimes, sometimes people don't even get to that step. And I, feel, I really do feel empathy for them. I feel bad because they just never, they never had a chance in life because of alcohol wow. to their full potential. Full potential, Paul. And these people that are ODing and dying on drugs, Mac Miller, Avicii fucking slit his wrists because of alcohol, right? And, th and these guys were the best in their craft. We don't know. If the Mac Miller or the Avicii that passed away, 20-year-old kid, we'll never know because he passed away from this terrible disease and this devil juice. It's really the devil. It's the dark side of the forest, right? It's the, it's the dark side that's consuming you, and you don't have that outlet, right? People that are in recovery, but people that are going through addiction, they might not have been as blessed as me to have the team that I had, the family, the friends, the support, the gym. That was my outlet, right? People are like, oh, Frank, you have 500 pounds on your back. You're trying to, you're trying to deadlift 600. It's like, well, yeah, because I know if I'm not lifting, I'll be at the bar for two or three hours. See, so I know myself, right? So I'm able to accept I know who I am a little bit now. There's, to come out and say that to you, Paul, right? I know if I'm not lifting, I'll be at the bar. That's why I work out. No other comment, no other question. I'll walk away or next topic. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. where people really need to develop that mentality and, and not really care what other people think and say, why are you really working out or why are you, you know, why, why are you really – um drinking as well because drinking is just the cause of something else you don't just drink to, to drink there's another issue if you're an alcoholic there's you know the root problem is why you're drinking you know okay. we don't wake up and say well i'm gonna black out for four days in a row and uh, i'm gonna feel really happy about it you know and, and you know i don't want to be you know we don't wake up at from birth and be like all right you are now a drug you're now addicted to heroin you're now an alcoholic no one wants to grow up and be that you know what i mean yeah yeah totally it, I, what you're talking about is so true in that it's it requires vulnerability to admit that you don't handle it well or to really question like is this something that is a good combination and a lot of people don't want to admit that because maybe it's weakness or you know how people will perceive them but to what you're talking about like that self-awareness right. the is ego so, the ego right so huge so key uh, i'm curious about this do you feel like your empathy or like how you see criminals or Drug, like druggies or alcoholics or like how that has changed in your in your professional life because to your point some people maybe they have mental health issues and it sends them in a spiral or they never had a chance like how do you how has that changed and how do you view that situation right. with your career oh man um when i first became a cop i always had empathy for people because i'm a big believer in the product of your environment right we learned that in middle school right um and then survival of the fittest, you know, Darwin. But after going through my, I guess we can call it the Great Depression, right? In the 18, in 2018, 2019, it was really dark, really bad. Um, going through that was like a rebirth, right? So the hero journey is us. We're the hero. And there's a book out there called The Hero of a Thousand Faces. Um, and it basically, you have a thousand faces, man, in your lifetime. And it's, you, Re, you are reborn in every part of your life, no matter what happens. You, you fight through the hero journey. And, you know, I got through my little journey and I was able to fight through it and become a better person. That's the main goal, right? You come out as a hero. And the negative part of that is you're addicted to the drugs or you're dead. So when I look at people now, 20% of the United States or the world 
I think it's 20% of, of basically, at least the United States population, and this is a fact, it's close, suffers from PTSD, anxiety, depression, 20%. So let's get three more people in here and let's see who says I've had depression or anxiety because I can raise my hand and I'm one of them. 30, that increases to 30% for first responders. So now you just took a 10% leap. Um, so I studied criminology in, in college. So it's the study of why perpetrators, why criminals act the way they do. It's more the psychology and the sociology, you know, um, Amelia Durkheim, the father of sociology and then Freud and, and, um, and all, all those big time guys who learn about their theories and everything. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. I don't know if people are going to agree like this, but we're, we're not so different than criminals. Let's quote it or, or perpetrators, right? It's just, we make the smarter decisions that are, that are, that are not going to impact our lives or hurt another human being. You know what I mean? So when I see someone, let's say like when I arrest someone for drugs, right. Or someone arrests someone for drugs, one, I know right off the bat, they're suffering, right? They're escaping reality. They have an internal issue, you know? Um, and my mindset has changed that they're not a, I hate using that term crackhead, right? Because they're a person, they're not a crackhead. You know, you might love food. You might love playing Xbox. So what are you, an Xbox head? What are you, an Oreo head? You know what I mean? So it's like, it needs to change also for law enforcement that these people, yeah, they might be assholes on the street, but there's no an assholes to you for an hour, but they're not it's not really personal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so a lot of people are, are suffering and a lot of people don't even know, you know, there's a lot of cops and firemen that are suffering and other people around them don't know. They might not even know yet, but they're suffering. They're doing habits that are, or that they're suffering and they're not even affected by. So that's why I'm really trying to talk about this to raise awareness. But those numbers are so big, man, anxiety, depression, PTSD. Everyone is addicted to something. I don't care what you, what people say. I'm not addicted to anything. Well, you're lying. That's your ego talking. You're addicted to something. Every day you wake up, you make coffee, you're addicted to it. Cut it off and see what happens to your mind and how you feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just kind of like that manning up quote to what are my bad habits or what are my good habits? You know what I mean? So yeah. like, yeah, that's it. My life has definitely changed on that. And homeless people on the street, you know, we're going to work on a project where <clears throat> We're going to take some homeless people out to lunch and we're going to talk to them and we're going to say, you know, we'll take you out to lunch, but we need to film this for a half an hour, 45 minutes. How'd you get here? You know, you were once a person living with a family and everything and loved ones. Why are you homeless? Why are you like this? Like, how did it happen? And try to get them to change their mind and, and to see, you know, that these people that you walk by every day, they're, they're people. They're not, they're not just some random creature under a bridge or something, you know, you don't know. And that's the problem with today's society, even on Instagram and in Facebook and Twitter. Everyone loves to comment negative things on people's things. Well, you don't even know this person. So why are you commenting millions and thousands of miles away? If it, is, it really, is it really bothering you that bad? Well, then you should look inward and you have an issue, right? So it's like, what, what is the point? If you don't like a page, then don't follow it. Don't comment on it. Let other people do what they want to do, all right? If it makes you that mad, talk to someone about it, right? So that's kind of like a huge point of like, if people just started focusing on themselves and just changing one habit a day, over time, that habit's going to be two, three, four, five habits. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm opening up my own gym now, or I'm able to run a mile in, in five minutes instead of seven minutes, right? I'm just doing one extra, extra thing a day that just adds up, right? Brick by brick. You know, the Roman empire wasn't just built in a week or a month. You hear that all the time, right? So it's consistency. It takes time. Look at the rock, 20 years old, out of Miami university, $7 in his pocket, living with his mom. All right. It took him years and years and years to, to get to where he is, you know, and the rock's not out drinking all the time. Yeah. He drinks his tequila here and there, but the rocks pro is not an alcoholic, so he can control it. Um, sobriety is the best bless. It is the, what you talk about working out. Sobriety is a blessing and it's a free, it is yeah. the best free gift in the world. And it's right in front of you, man. You just got to yeah. put in a little work. And even if people aren't addicts yet or not, right. Because you always have a chance to become an, an addict. Um, recognize that it's very powerful that it's for free and um it, it sobriety will really make your dreams come true even you know realistic dreams come true so that's it's just a blessing and surprise it, it's just a blessing man you know yeah. I, I love to, to talk about that absolutely i think you make a really good point too with everyone being a product of their environment like if we grew up in a different family a different neighborhood we could be on the street obviously everyone makes their own decisions but the statistics become much more different if you're raised 
in a, an environment that is much more likely for you to succeed and in a, a healthier household or something to that fact. So uh, do you make a really good point. Like, we don't know where someone's been. We don't know what they're going through. We, someone might, you know, bump into us and be, and be an asshole on the street, but maybe they just lost their mom and they're battling with their own thing too. And we just go and feel that by calling them, you know, a bitch or something. And it's like, man, just like empathy, love people. Um, and it, it goes a long way. You, you've touched on it a couple of times and I heard you mention this in your video, but your favorite quote is do or do not. There is no try. Or you, you really like that quote. And I'm a huge star Wars guy. And so I'm curious on like if, if you are too, and cause you've touched on mythology and, and human psyche as well. And I just, I just love the parallels between like, it, it's almost like it's telling stories, right? Star Wars, there's the hero's journey in that there's the light side and the dark side, there's the shadow self and you know, the, the light side self. Uh, is, is that something that you, you see from like a mental health standpoint and, and that journey that you're talking about? A hundred percent, a thousand percent. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, big time, because every, not even Star Wars, Harry Potter fans, Lord of the Rings, all these movies, they have a hero journey, and they all go through some up type down depression. It's just so relevant, right? And the power, Lord of the Rings, the ring, right? You get the ring, and you, and, and you that ego feeds you, and then you start turning into someone else, because you feel that power, you know? Um, Star Wars is huge. George Lucas kind of created Star Wars from a psychological standpoint, from that book that I told you. The thousand uh, hero of a thousand faces. He's, yeah. He loves that book, and that book is um, it's the hero journey. Luke Skywalker is the hero of the movie. It's his journey. Um, Anakin, be, you know, becoming Darth Vader, um, and then you have the new hero in the newer movies, uh, Ray. You know, so and then you have Kylo Ren. Look at that internal battle, man. That's crazy. You know, that internal battle is dark side, good side, dark side, and then he becomes, you know, spoiler, shut it off. You know, <laughs> he becomes he becomes Ben Solo, right? And he's able yeah. to die knowing that, that he passed away his true self. Again, people die from drinking and overdose. They're not dying their true self, right? So that's um, definitely a, a, a crazy, a, a crazy um, storytelling has been told throughout time. Like um, whatever religion you believe in, it's just so popular and so back in the, in the seven, eight hundred, nine hundreds, uh, but it just throughout time, storytelling is huge, right? Like it's, you sit around a fire, you talk about the gods and it's that vision and what you kind of believe in. Um, and now you can look at like Je the story of Jesus, um, Greek mythology, you have Zeus, um, in, in Norse mythology, you have Odin and Thor, right? But they're the Buddha, right? They, they all are almost telling the same story, which is very, it really just, it, it's crazy that it just, if you think about it, like, you know, Jesus hung, uh, G Jesus was on the cross, right? Odin, he hung himself from a tree for nine days. He sacrificed his eye for, for, um, intellect to know everything. The Buddha was said that he walked through a rainbow and all of his suffering, right? Walked on top of a rainbow. So it's more of like, um, you know, it's the picture, like the language meant to, you know, in interpret like, you know, like symbols. Like we talked yeah. about, you know, and like the little things I shared with you today, um, like a piece of writing I was working on, like, um, you know, Odin sacrificed himself on the tree as Christ sacrificed himself on the cross. You know, the, the, the suffering is a shedding of a mortal substance to be reborn. It, again, what did we talk about before? The hero journey, right? Being yep. reborn. Now, this is this is mythology. We this is we don't know if this actually happened, but it's just, you know, it, it's just from from a mythological standpoint to be reborn, you know, yeah. Um to be reborn into a spiritual, not substance or the eternal, you know, Odin sacrificed his eye for knowledge, you know, in a sense, um, the Egyptian God, Horus, you know, the eye, uh, the eye, the, the all seeing Odin is called the all father. And then you look on the, the back of a dollar bill, right? You know, those eyes, you know, the eyes of Horus on the pyramid. So this stuff has been looked, you know, the, the freaking pyramids on a dollar bill. So it's been happening thousands of years. Um, so it just shows, you know, it goes way back to the oral traditions before there was writing. So we don't know really how old this stuff is, which is really intrigues me, you know? Um, but from a Star Wars, a Star Wars and the human psyche standpoint, I mean, it's right in front of you. If you study it and you look at it, I mean, I'm a nerd. So I, I, I've done a lot of just studying on Star Wars itself and how it relates to the human psyche. And I have a close friend that we talk about this stuff. Um, and Yoda drops, you know, you know, so if you think about a spiritual leader or you want to, you know, you're in sobriety. You want to be like a Jedi Knight, right? You, you want to 
that's kind of like in recovery, like a Jedi Knight, you're using what you learned in your life for wisdom um, and to spread that wisdom and knowledge. Um, now, there's a lot of quotes from Yoda that I, can, that I can nail on the point where people will be like, wow, he said this and I don't even know what it means. You know what I mean? So I, I could go into that if you want me to. It, it, <laughs> it's all to you. No, it's, it's totally fine. But you're, you're totally right. Y- Yoda will say quotes and you're like, you could put Buddha behind the quote and people will be like, oh, yeah, Buddha said that. Like, no, actually, that was, that was Sir Yoda. Um, from Empire Strikes Back, right? <laughs> so I don't know. Right, I, find right. that, um, I find that. I find that really funny. It's great. It, it is great. Um, the do or do not try. I love it because once you say I'm going to try, you're already putting yourself at a disadvantage. Yeah. Right. So do it or don't do it. Work as hard as you can and be realistic about it. Well, if you really gave it 100 percent, did I really give it 100 percent, Frank? You know, did you really give it 100 percent, Paul? And if you did, then you can. All right. This is not real realistic for me. I did my best, and that's it. Um, but to really talk about like depression and anxiety, which is, you know, um, Luke real quick, you know, Luke will, and there's not really a good or a bad side. Right. So Anakin became Darth Vader as a mechanic. Like, he's a machine. He never followed his own path. That's the issue right there. A lot of people don't follow their own path and they get stuck. Mm-hmm. So there's, everyone has a good and dark side inside of them. It's just, which one are you going to feed and which one are you going to be able to control the best? So if you think about it, Vader is a machine. He followed the emperor. So he never was able to find his own path. But at the very end of the movie, right, there's a little light in him and he was able to express that and go from there. So there's always light and dark inside of people. It just depends what, what are you, what are you going to, what are you going to feed? Like, you know, well, you know, Luke said to Yoda, how do I know the good side from the bad? And Yoda said, you know, you will know when you are calm, at peace, passive, right? So I look at that as sobriety. You're not putting drugs or alcohol into you. You know, you're doing yoga. You're working out. You're passive. You're peace. You know, a Jedi, and this is so powerful. And then that's it with the Yoda quotes. You know, a Jedi uses the force for knowledge and defense, never for attack. And then Yoda says, clear your mind. So a lot of people could use their ego as an attack, you know, but a Jedi, a true Jedi really is, you know, trying to pass wisdom on. And if you get attacked for defense and then you got to do what you have to do. But no, a true Jedi never just goes up and attacks for no reason. Yeah. So it's very, very powerful stuff from from Jedi from Yoda. So that's really, really, um, really powerful. Yeah. The one of my, my other favorite ones was when he pulls the ship out of the water, and Luke says, "I don't believe it." And he's like, "That is why you fail." And you know, you think about going up to a bar. You got five hundred pounds. You're trying to lift off. If you're ninety eight percent sure that you're going to pull it off, you're not going to pull it off. You got to go in there and not an ounce doubt that you're going to do it. Otherwise it's literally affecting your ability to go in and execute, you know, that rep. Right. You have to, you have to, and I tell athletes and people before competitions, you need to think about the competition weeks before, man. You can't think about it the night of you need Mm -hmm. to mentally prepare yourself and pick. It's part of the Jedi journey, the hero journey. Picture yourself on that platform, picture yourself, whatever it is on that bodybuilding show, picture yourself winning at least to the top, you know, Picture yourself doing what you can do, right? So before I went to the gym and I was going to, and let's say I'm pulling 500 for a triple. Once my coach sends me that program, I'm thinking of that all week, you know, and that's an obsession, you know, and that's an addiction, but I'm, I'm mentally putting myself on the platform before that. And I need to control that now, right? It's controlling our thoughts. If I'm driving or if I'm at work and I think about that, I feel a little tingly. My fight or flight's going to kick in. I can feel my adrenaline pumping. So I need to relax yeah. and pick the right time to when to really Think like when I have a competition the week of, if I think about that competition while I'm driving to work, um, I, I feel my hair is going up. I need, I usually try to find a place in my day if I'm taking a shower before bed where I can really get peace and quiet and picture myself on that, on that platform and on that stage. And that's what a lot more people hopefully they can do is they spend hours in the gym, but then are you spending at least 20, 30 minutes? Are you spending an hour mentally preparing yourself for that competition? Why? Ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this show? Why am I doing this? Right? It's for me. But there's also another reason why it's driving you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for a lot of athletes too, having something that you're working towards gives you that motivation to continue to work hard. I feel like if, at least for myself, if I don't have a competition that I'm training for and I'm just kind of training aimlessly, then it's like, where am I, what is this working towards? But for you, and you're like, all right, I know, I think in April, right? You got a, another competition coming up? Right. At the end of April, I'm going to do my first competition in like the 181 open cl- weight class. Okay, yeah. So it's like, every time you go up to the bar, like there's a reason behind it. It's not just going off into the abyss. And so anyone listening, they're like, I lost motivation or I'm not 
training or competing for everything. Like give yourself something to work towards and you're going to see everything exponentially like light that fire under your ass. Uh, exactly. A hundred percent. Um, as a competitor or an athlete, if you could plan out your shows in the beginning of the year, like every three, four months, then you got something to look forward to. Right. And it might be a PR, you know, obviously if you're very competitive and you're a strong man, power, uh, powerlifting, bodybuilding, CrossFit, you want to win, right? You want a place, but remember, you also need to beat your old self. You need to beat those old numbers. You really yeah. need to, I'm fighting against Frank of 2019 who was depressed, who was drinking. And now here I am doing all this stuff or I'm fighting against Frank back when I was powerlifting four years ago where I need to beat these numbers that Frank used to do, you know? And over time, if you look at it like that way, you're going to be like, wow, I'm really beating my old self and getting these great numbers. And as you focus on yourself and those numbers expand and get larger, you're going to be beating other people. That's yeah. what a lot of people shouldn't be looking on their competitors, Instagrams or Facebooks. What are they pulling? What are they doing a month out? No, 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 no. Focus on what you did a month ago. And I guarantee you, it might not be now, but when you're 30, 35, right? As it says, you know, a man is a 30, a 30, like around 35 that are strongest. And if you're a young kid listening to this in your teens or 20s or like me, 27, think about all the work you put in until once you reach 35 and you look back seven years ago and be like, wow, you know, th this is, this is something else. I've been focusing on myself and now I'm, I'm where I want to be at this moment. I'm not where I ever want to be because no one can ever be where they really want to be hundred percent, but I'm very content and happy of who I am right now. Yeah. You're putting in the work that's got you on the path and that's all you can ask for. For me to right. be, is to be on the path and know that you're doing everything you can to and I agree with you, 100%. chase that version of yourself that you'll never, you'll never hit them, but the best you can do is just keep working towards it. Exactly. Um, and again, being sober is, again, is on that path. I created this path myself. If I was drinking, I didn't think I didn't drug, I didn't do drugs. You know, the only drug I ever picked up was alcohol, you know, and, uh, I wouldn't be on this path, man. I would be on someone else's path, right? I would be a jail institution or death, man. People have already done that. You know, I, I would have been there. It's yeah. just, it's just crazy, you know, and I didn't really talk about my story, but you know, I didn't drink every, every day I drank socially. But when I got really depressed, I started drinking by myself, really cutting it off. And I was like, wow, now something's going on. Cause I didn't, I didn't never drink by myself. Now I'm coping with alcohol. Now it's an issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That's powerful. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you're really excited for with the foundation, with yourself? I know you mentioned the, the event in April, but anything coming up in 2020 that people can help support or that you want to bring awareness to? Um, yeah, I'm, um, I mean, the Instagram is reps, for, uh, reps underscore four underscore responders. Our YouTube is reps for responders. We have a GoFundMe um, for reps for responders. Um, I have the show at the end of April. <clears throat> I'm going to in, um, participate, which is really cool, at the police and fire games in San Diego in June, a push-pull. That's cool. And uh, that's going to be really, really something cool to do to get back on the powerlifting platform. And the plan is if I qualify for nationals um, at the end of April and place top three, then I have a chance to go at the end of June to Minnesota to do nationals, the USS. So that'll be <clears throat> really cool, and that's what I'm looking forward to. But from a retro responder standpoint, <clears throat> um, I'm looking towards – I want this place to be the Mecca of, Hey, I'm, I'm in California. I'm in Florida. I'm in Pennsylvania. But when I come visit New York for anything, I want to be able to come here. If it's 2 AM, <clears throat> I'll open up the gym for you. If I don't know you and you're listening to this podcast and you give me a DM, no matter what at the time, I'll take the time out of my day to give a 10, 15 minute, 20 minute phone call, try to get you the right way of thinking, try to hook you up with the right people. <clears throat> but we're going to do a cool fundraiser that live for depression. And uh, the goal is to, uh, give back the money to the we had, NYPD had 10 suicides last year in 2019, 228 police suicides countrywide. So that's almost one every 36 hours taking their own lives. Um, and the suicide rate, of course, not first responder or not. I feel the same. It's just don't do it. Yeah. If you're thinking about doing it, give me a DM, give Paul a DM and I'm going to help you the best I can. Cause I know <clears throat> I've been in a very dark place. Um, but we're going to, do the deadlift for depression and basic like, you know, weight classes and how many reps you could do in 60 seconds. And the money we raise is going to go to the families that, uh, they lost, um, you know, the 10 New York city police officers, you know, and, uh, donate to them. So we have a lot to look forward to and a lot of cool seminars and speakers. So definitely hit us up and reach out to us. Or, you know, if you're feeling upset, you know, also reach out to Paul and, you know, 
the guys like us, we, 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 we have to give back, you know, it's our, what we think about is why we're put here on this earth. So yeah, uh, we're very confident with that. So, you know, thank you, Paul. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I appreciate you for coming on, sharing, creating this amazing platform. It'll be really fun to watch it grow and, you know, watch you continue to grow and compete as well, man. I'll be pulling for you as you're pulling, pulling those weights up. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I, I like to end these podcasts, you know, talking mental health and, and good, serious stuff, but spin it a little bit uh, and get a little bit to know more about your personality. So I'll just rattle off like kind of like four or five questions to get to know you. What's your favorite movie? I think I know the answer, but uh, I'll let you go. Oh, you're going to think I was going to say Star Wars? You can uh, say whatever you want. Um, my favorite movie, this, oh man. I mean, Bronx Tale, Goodfellas, but recently in the past few years when I was really depressed, I related with The Departed. With Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Because here's a guy who is pretending to be someone he's not, and he's on all these SSRIs. You know, and, and I, I'll admit I was on a bunch of SSRIs. I was pumped like a lab rat for three, four months, six or seven of them. All right. So now imagine your mindset, you're on these SSRIs, and then I cut cold turkey because the SSRI was making me feel like a zombie. It wasn't me, it was making things worse. But then I was drinking. So now you're all over the place. Leonardo DiCaprio, same thing. He was someone he wasn't. And I had a very crazy job change, and that's kind of where my anxiety and depression came in, right? I've never had this depression before. It's a situational depression that turned to a major depressive disorder. And that's what happened with Leo. He was pretending to be someone he, was, he wasn't, he was and it ultimately killed him. So I really related with the Departed movie. Any first responder, any first responder or not, check out The Departed because it's a classic. Mark Wahlberg, there's great actors in there. Yeah, definitely a good one. Uh, favorite artist or album? If you're going to pop something into the car right now. Oh, man. I mean, growing up, I love Biggie Smalls, even though way before my time. Um, but I'm going to pop something in right now. I, I, I guess I'm going to have to go with Eminem, right? Because he tells his life like a true story, and he's not afraid to say how he feels and what he went through. He's still here. Yeah. So probably, you know, lose yourself, right? You know, you got one shot, and he that's failed so many times. But that's the thing is. He never gave up, right? So remember, so many of these actors, so many of these artists, so many of these athletes, they failed. They struck out on the bottom of the ninth. They lost the Super Bowl, but they didn't just give up. They just, they kept going because you, you have to. You don't want to waste your precious time and you just, you, you can't give up. So please just think about those type of people, you know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you just hit your PR and you got to go smash some food because you're starving. What are you going to go get? Oh, man. I like, yeah, there you go. Uh, probably definitely steak, sweet potato fries, um, and cooks and cream ice cream. 100% hands down. It's my what last kind of, meal. What kind of ice or, cream? Yeah. Uh, cookies, cookies and cream? Like, is it like a Ben and Jerry's one or is it a local one? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, probably like a Jersey, a Jersey Shore type ice cream. There's so many different flavors, like uh, yeah. homemade spots that you can't beat Jersey Shore ice cream. Yeah. How you doing? But yeah, it's really the Jersey, okay. New York, Italian one right there. Cool, cool. Love it. Um, all right, we got one more. Um, any athlete that are alive, if you could meet them, sit down, have dinner, who would it be? No, hands down. I, once you said any ath, I knew what it was. Tim Tebow, hands down. Tim you know? Tebow. Okay, cool. I, I love the guy. I so mean, that's a great one. I mean, here's a guy that was national champion, right? Uh, talked about he made it to the NFL and was getting ripped on, destroyed. And he just was so positive. And I, I, I can't believe how positive he was. And here he is, right? Game one, was it? Broncos beating the Steelers. It was a miracle. And then, was it John 316 or what he threw for? Was the yeah. same exact yards. So everything was the same, which is a miracle. So you don't have to believe in God. You don't have to believe, right? But you follow Tim Tebow's path, the way he talks. Um, he's very... I mean, this guy, the guy's closest to a saint, walking saint there is. Yeah, you know, he's, he's very smart. positive. There. And he's someone I followed for since when he, even he was a backup to Chris Leak in the Florida Gators. So, I mean, he I've been following him for, for a long time. So, uh, Tim Tebow is definitely up there. Just to shake his hand would be a blessing, you know? Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, appreciate you giving us a little bit of background on you. And, again, thank you so much for, for coming on the podcast and just sharing your story and, and everything you're doing. Really, really love it, man. Oh, thanks. I, I, I appreciate uh, you having me. And remember, the everyone out there, if you are suffering, talk about it. Don't hold it in because it's going to really 
you're not helping yourself. So reach out to Paul, reach out to me, reach out to your family, friends, and, and get help because everyone is in this together. We're on the same earth together, so let's try to work together. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for the support, and uh, everyone have a safe night, and, and God bless. All right. Take it easy, brother. Thank you. Before I let you guys go, just want to say thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Be sure and tag Reps for Responders and myself on social media if you're listening to it and got something out of it. Also, leave a five-star rating and review on iTunes and subscribe. That's how we help grow the podcast. That's how we help get people on like Officer Frank so that we can help spread this message of mental health and of mental mastery all through the lens of being a competitor and still wanting to go and achieve great things, but being more mindful about how we do it. I really appreciate you guys listening all the way through. I'll catch you next time on the Down Dog Athletics Podcast. <laughs>